This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Guess what, guys? I'm about to break with tradition, at least my tradition. When I teach a program, I like to logically go through it. So we're in the library. The next logical is the develop, and the next logical is map, book, slideshow, print, web. I'm going to skip develop for this one short chapter and talk about map. Now, there's two reasons I want to do that. Number one, I like it. I think it's really cool. But the other reason, I think it's logical, because the last couple of chapters that we've worked in, we have worked in organizing images, keywords, metadata, that kind of stuff, yes? And mapping is organizing your images where they were shot, which to me is really neat. So what we're going to do first is choose a folder that has images that are geocoded. So I'm going to go into 005 right here. I never made 007. I just got to 005. You will notice some of the images over here. Let me make that bigger for a second. Have that unique icon on them. And if you hover it, it'll tell you that they are photos that have been GPS coordinated. These are from my cell phone. Now there are a lot of ways that we can GPS coordinate here. Number one, if you run Canon equipment, it costs about six or seven hundred dollars US to actually place the GPS type of device into a Canon camera and it's about that much for a Nikon. Let me turn you on to something. I'm just gonna mention it. You guys need to go into it and check it out. There is an iPad app that's $2.99 US. It's called GPS4, the number four. You go out to the App Store, check it out. It has a desktop version, Mac or Windows, and it has the iPad version. For $2.99, it will help you coordinate your images on almost any camera to a GPX file, which you can then bring in to Lightroom and geocode your images. That's kind of interesting. But let's forget that. Let's forget anything. What do you have? You probably have a cell phone. If you're taking photographs with your cell phone, and most cell phones do that, it is recording the geo coordinates for the photograph, unless you turn that off. Some cameras allow you to do that. If you've got it turned off, turn it back on. So these cell phone items right here, let's get into map. Click right up here. This really is cool. Now you're looking at a Google map. So you have to be online for this to work, obviously. And I can see the United States, which is where I'm from. And I've got a 14 and a 2 right over here. What does that mean? There are 14 images here, and there are two images down here. If I hover, it'll show me the images. I can then come up here, and I can click on them. If I want to move in a little bit closer, which I do, we have a couple of ways we can do that. Come over here and right-click your mouse, and then go into Zoom In. Now it will zoom in on that area and notice it's splitting it up a little bit more. Because it was so small, it had the 11 and the 3 together, and then the 2 was still down there. So the 11 and the 3 were taken in Kansas, one outside Lawrence on a uh, 100K bike ride I was on. The others are at home, and the 2 down on the bottom is around Texas. Let's start with those. Come down here and zoom in on those. I did not put these here. When I selected a folder that had images in it that were geocoded, it put them here automatically. So you don't have to do anything. We're working with images in this first lesson that you already have geocoded. But in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you do this, even if you don't have them geocoded. So we can open them up. Again, we can hover. Or we can just keep blowing it up. You got a little plus sign down here and a negative down here and a slider. If I click this button, I can get closer and closer and closer to the area. So that's right out of Dallas, Texas, kind of on like on the northwest side of the town. All right, right up here. Now you've got a couple of ways that we can look at the map. Right now we're looking right down here at a hybrid. The hybrid's got the satellite images, but it also has things like roads and city names and stuff like that. If we click here, we can go into road map, and this is probably very familiar to people that use GPSs. If we click it again, we can get into just the satellite view. And let's make that a little bit bigger while we're here. I'm just click that plus on it. will keep it centered for me. You can get in pretty tight. 
So apparently I was right on the interstate when I took these. Actually, this is a hotel right here. And that's the hotel where I took those photographs. And again, you want to look at them. It's actually just an outdoor gas kind of like fire pit. And I liked it. Thought I might want to build one someday. So I took a couple photographs of it. That's all it is. Down here are the other photos that were still in that file. And we can get to those just by clicking on them right there. Let's come back over here again. We have three other options. You can go to terrain. And let me make that a little bit smaller so you can kind of see. It's hills and mountains. There's not a lot of that in Texas. But it will give you terrain. And then you've got two new ones. You've got light, which just basically lightens it up for you. And you have dark. Let's do this. Let's go back into hybrid. That is actually the default, incidentally. So we can change the map. We know where the images are. That's done for us automatically. We can raise or lower the zoom. Oh, incidentally, you can also use the plus and minus keys on your keypad to do the same thing. If you have a scroll bar on your mouse, watch what I can do up here, is I can do it that way too. So you can make it larger or smaller in a lot of different ways. This button right here looks like a little lock. And what that does is it locks down any markers that you have. And then you have one more option right here. If you click this option, you've got a track log. Now that's a GPX data file. And if you remember what I just mentioned to you before we got here, programs like GPS4 save those GPX files, which you can then load here and then bring right into Lightroom. It's actually pretty interesting. Over here, this button right here allows you to change what you see. Do you want to see the map style? Do you want to see the zoom, the pin lock, or the track log? So you can turn all those things off or on. By default, since there's not a lot, they're all on. And up here, the location filter. It's going to say, okay, what's visible on the map? Now, see, these are the two images that are now visible on the map. That's why they're there. It's showing them to me. Anything that's tagged, see, all those are tagged. Those are all my geocoded images. Or anything that's untagged or none. So in this first lesson, Lightroom's taking care of everything for us, assuming, and of course assuming always gets us in trouble, but assuming we have a camera or an iPhone or an iPad or a smartphone that takes photographs and links that information to the photo. On to the next.